In this video, we're going to discuss the Coase Theorem. So we've been talking about how negative externalities can create a problem because we've got one person imposing costs on another person but not reimbursing him or her for the harm that's being done. In a Pigouvian tax and, and cap and trade are different ways that we can think about bringing about the socially efficient outcome, the socially efficient amount of pollution or whatever the externality is. However, this guy named Ronald Coase came up with a really innovative idea, which is that a negative externality can just be resolved by bargaining between the parties. So the person that's creating the externality and then the person that's being affected by the externality, they can bargain and come up with a deal where they basically achieve this socially efficient outcome. So they can just work this out on their own, but there are two really important assumptions to, to Coase's argument. So one is that property rights are clearly defined. So if somebody says, hey, look, I'm polluting this river, then the other person is able to say, hey, I have a right to clean water and so forth. Property rights have to be clearly defined and the transaction costs have to be low. And transaction costs, I'll, I'll define it a little more when we talk in the example, but basically it's the cost of exchange, the cost of coming to an agreement, the time and effort it would take to come to this agreement and to do the bargaining. And that's going to become evident in our examples to come. So let's say, let, let's think about pollution here for a minute. Let's think about a factory that pollutes and they're polluting a nearby river. So they're polluting this river here. They're dump maybe they're manufacturing steel or some chemical and they dump sludge into this river and there happens to be somebody who lives on the other side of that river and that person likes to fish in that river but the chemicals that are being dumped in the river are killing some of the fish. So they're, they're killing some of the fish. So now this person has fewer fish that they can catch. So they, they've been harmed. So there's been some harm. And what Coase is basically saying is, look, on the one hand, yes, this factory is doing something wrong, but also this person is choosing to live here. And so these two parties, if we say, okay, well, what are their property rights? Assuming that we can define their property rights, they can come to an agreement on their own, absent any kind of government intervention. So let's say that this person's property right is a right to clean water, a right to fish, right? So they've got a right to, to clean water in this, this river. And so now it's that the factory is violating this person's property rights. So the person can say, hey, look, I have a right to clean water here. And so you're violating my right. And so therefore we have to come to some kind of agreement. And so maybe the factory says, okay, well, look, we will give you, let's say, $50,000 a year for the fact that you are being inconvenienced and so forth. Right now, this person could choose to accept that. They could choose to reject that and move away, any number of things. But the idea is, with coast bargaining, is that these two parties come to this, this, this agreement on their own. Okay? Now, transaction costs are low here. And the reason that transaction costs are low is because there's just one person who's being harmed and then there's one factory. And so they can bargain with one another. But what if you had a situation, what if, what if we had a situation where there was a factory in let's say Los Angeles that was putting off all kinds of pollution in the air and it was creating smog. And so it's creating smog and that's making it difficult for people to breathe and so there are costs being imposed, let's say, on millions of people, right? So there are millions of people. Now it's not just one person that happens to live on the other side of the river. Now it's millions of people who are being harmed. Now, you could say, okay, these people have property rights. They have a right to clean air. They have a right to clean air, and that factory is violating their rights. So then those people have standing to say, hey, look, we've got an issue here. You're creating this pollution which is violating our property rights, we need to come to an agreement. But the problem is that in such a situation, close bargaining wouldn't necessarily work because transaction costs are going to be high. And this is what transaction costs are. You've got millions of people here. For each one of those people to go and work out some kind of agreement with the factory would be basically almost impossible, right? Because each person, one person might say, look, 
if you give me a hundred dollars a year I'm happy with it and then another person says well I want ten thousand dollars and they for millions of people to individually come and, and strike some kind of bargain with this factory and to determine how much each of them has been harmed. And it's just so many people to work out a solution that in such a case, uh, close bargaining just really wouldn't work.